This video has been requested quite a few times, so I'm finally going to sit down and walk through how to build a spreadsheet on Excel to track your inventory and sales. I sell on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay, and all of my sales, all of my inventory, everything like that are all organized onto one single spreadsheet. So I'm going to walk through how to make a pretty simple, straightforward spreadsheet with a couple formulas and things that'll just help streamline the process and make your administrative work a little bit more easy and hopefully just get you a little bit more organized. So I am on Excel. I started a new workbook. First thing I'm going to do is just create a little bit of a table. And I don't know exactly how many columns and rows off the top of my head. So we are just going to kind of guess so far. So this is the button right here that you can select to create borders. And then it looks a little bit more like this. So here is the table. So on the very top row here is where we're going to enter all the titles of the different columns for the spreadsheet. So the first thing I'm going to put in is purchase date. So anything that you bring home from the thrift store, you will just add in the date here. And this is all just obviously suggestion and an example. You can tweak this however you want to and just really personalize it. So the other thing I'm going to do is highlight this row and then just hit this B here to bold it because I like my titles to be bold. And I'm also going to just zoom in a tiny bit down here. There we go. Maybe one more. Yep, that looks good. All right, then the next row over, the next um, column is going to be the product. Oh, yep. And this one I am going to extend quite a bit just because I like to get pretty descriptive with what I you know, what all I enter in for the product. So the next thing I would put is cost of good, what you spent for the item. Then over here, I would do probably date listed. So once I finally do list the item on any of the platforms I'm going to list it on, I would enter that in and that'll come into play later. I will show you, but that's again, very optional. All this is, I guess, optional, but this is just a good way to get everything all onto one sheet. So then the next thing, price listed once it does get listed then right here I would do date sold and then the price sold then next I would do a column for the platform fee what that cost was next would be shipping cost And total profit, turnaround time, and on the end I put storage location or anywhere to locate where the item is. You could also add another column in here if you wanted for notes, just anything you want to add if you wanted to, you know, make note of what the counter offer process was like or which thrift store you bought it at, anything like that could be another helpful column to add in. On Excel, everything just is automatically general right here, but in a lot of these cases, we want it to either show up as a date when we input things or as a price. So under purchase date here, I'm just gonna highlight these cells, come over here, drop down and then hit short date. Same thing with date listed and the date sold. I think that's all of them. So then for a few of them, we want them to show up as a price with the dollar sign. So for cost of good, I'll highlight these cells, drop down this menu and go to currency. Under price listed, same thing, currency. Price sold will also be currency, as well as the platform fee, shipping costs, and total profit. And then I'm just gonna go through and kind of make up some things to input as far as if I did come home from the thrift store, exactly how I would enter things in. And then some of it obviously wouldn't be entered in until things sold. 
or were listed. So this is just the full process. If we went from, you know, thrift store, listing it, selling it, everything that would be inputted. This is also where I'll walk through and share the formulas to input. So that is what we'll do here. Okay, so purchase dates. So let's say I bought this item on 2 26 24. The product was a pair of Levi's 501 cropped straight leg jeans in a medium wash, size 30. And you could also get extremely specific here and do the brand, do the size, color, style, and just do a different column for each of those if you wanted to be a little bit more specific. I personally just go this route and enter it all in into one. I think it makes it a little bit just easier for me. So whatever works for you, that's definitely an option. Moving over here to cost of good, let's say I thrifted at the bins, which is a very likely scenario. So I spent $1.89. For the date listed, let's say I listed it on 227. The price that I listed it, let's say was $40. Then let's say this was a really quick flip and it sold pretty much right away. So it sold on 228. 24 and the price that it sold was $30. Okay, so now we are getting into the potential formulas. If you sell on multiple platforms, you can just input in any of the um, platform fees. I know Mercari has a very confusing one. It's a certain percentage plus like 30 cents or 60 cents or something. So some of them are really specific and I do kind of think it's nice just to go look at the platform or your email or whatever, wherever you see the breakdown of the sale and just enter in the sale price. Another thing you could do, especially if you just sell on Poshmark, let's say, is you could enter in a formula that will, you know, just always be there on the platform fee. So as soon as you enter in the price sold, it would generate the platform fee. In that scenario, we would make an if statement formula. So it would be equals if parenthesis. Then the first test it's going to do is basically if this I, if what I input into price sold is true, then this will happen. If it's false, then this will happen. So the first, oh wait, it says right here, a logical test would be if the price sold right here equals zero. So if I didn't have anything inputted there, that would be true, comma, quotations, comma. So if the price sold is zero, if there's nothing there, then nothing will show up there. That's what the two parentheses next to each other indicates. There's nothing in between there. That would be nothing there. If that's false, if there is something inputted in price sold, then it would be price sold times, which is shift eight, 0 0.2, since Poshmark takes a 20% fee, parenthesis, enter. So in that case, the platform fee is $6. You could have also entered in $6. There is another way to add drop down menus, which is a little more advanced than I know how to do on Excel. So if you did have drop downs, you could input that and for each platform you sell on, it could generate the fee. This is all I know how to do. So whether you input the fee yourself or create that formula, if you just sell on one, um, that's all I can really help with on the platform fee. But now that we have that formula in there, you can then click on the cell and then this bottom right corner here, this little green, um, box, you'll just select that and drag it down. So now that formula will be in every single right here. As we go down, there it is again. It'll just be all the way down there. So then for shipping cost, this is another thing that you would just input in if you have a shipping cost or not. So a lot of times on Poshmark, my shipping cost is $2.02. .02 because if I send an offer to Likers, then they um, get a little bit of a discount on their shipping costs so that 
takes two dollars and two cents out of my profit so i'm just going to enter that 202 a lot of times i don't have a shipping cost so then i would just put zero so then the next column here total profit is going to be another formula and i think this is probably one of the most helpful formulas because as you enter things in it'll then just automatically generate your profit which i think is very very helpful so again it's going to be an if statement if it's true then this if it's false then this so equals i f parenthesis then the logical test again is going to be this time price sold equals zero comma so if the price sold is zero if there's nothing there then we will do those quotations again comma space if that's false then it's going to be price sold so i'm clicking on that cell minus all the things that we need to take out so it'll be the price sold minus the cost of good minus the platform fee minus the shipping cost so those are all the costs to get the total profit and then parenthesis again to end it so my total profit for this scenario twenty dollars and nine cents again we'll click on that cell and then at the bottom right corner click and drag down so then that pulls the formula through all the cells along the column. The turnaround time is one of my most helpful <laughs> formulas that my spreadsheet shares with me and that tells me how long an item took to sell. And I think that's a really helpful thing to look at because it can help you make decisions, future decisions. If an item took a really long time to sell, it might not be the best item to pick up again. Maybe that's okay with you, but um, I think it's just a good thing to keep in keep an eye on just to see what's selling quicker and what's taking a little bit longer. So the formula for this one is going to be another IF statement, if statement. So equals IF parenthesis. So if the price sold equals zero. So if it hasn't sold, if the item has not sold, then parenthesis, or sorry, quotation, quotation, comma, space. And if that's false, if the item has sold and there's something in the price sold, then it will be the date sold minus the date listed and the parenthesis. So that was a one day turnaround time. Again, we'll click that cell, highlight, or click on that bottom right, drag it down. Storage location for this, this is where I enter in the bin number, letter and number. So if I stored this in my B bin, B-13 let's say is the storage location. Okay, so now that we have all of our formulas in there and all of the columns set up and ready, let's do one more example down here just so we have a couple different data points to kind of work with. Let's give this a different, a little bit of a different scenario. So we'll say the purchase date was back in January, January 14th, 2024, and it was a Reformation silk blouse top in a cream color, size large. The cost of good was $1.72. The date listed was 1.18.24. The price listed was $50. The date it finally ended up selling was 2.12.24. The price sold was 42. So if this was in our scenario where this is all on Poshmark and we have the platform fee formula in there, now when I hit enter, when I do the price sold, it's going to generate the platform fee here and the total profit, assuming I don't have any shipping costs. So if I do have a shipping cost, again, it's $2.02, then that'll adjust the profit here. The turnaround time was 25 days. And let's say the note I add in was countered back and forth with the buyer. I don't know, that's a random <laughs> example, but that's really it. Super simple, just like entering in a few things. And then it is very, very nice to have the total profit generated automatically once you enter in a few things and the turnaround time. I think that is very, very helpful. So now that we have those, I'm gonna add in another thing onto the spreadsheet that I find very helpful just to take a quick look at my numbers. So I'm gonna add in a couple rows 
up here just to give a little more room. So a couple things I like to track are my total revenue. So again, I'm gonna bold total revenue and then the total profit. So I can just take a quick glance for the year and I do my spreadsheet for one year. So I would do, I have one right now for 2024. I had one last year, the year before, the year before. So you could do month, you could break it down by month and do different tabs down at the bottom. You know, the world is your oyster when it comes to your spreadsheet, but you know, hopefully this is giving you some good ideas. So for total revenue, this is going to be a subtotal of the total revenue column. So we'll hit um, another, this will be another formula. So equals subtotal. It'll automatically create that parenthesis, and then we want it to be a sum. So right here, sum, comma. Then the column we want to, you know, get the subtotal of will be the price sold right here. So that is the H column. So we're going to do H colon H parenthesis. And then these two we will also want to make into, I know, what are you doing? Did you have a good nap? So we'll do currency again. So then it automatically just pulls the subtotal of my current revenue here. Then for total profit, it'll be almost the exact same thing for the formula. We'll hit equal subtotal and then the sum comma. And then for this column, it is the um, K column. So K colon Okay, parenthesis, enter. So that is the total profit. At a quick glance, anytime I enter in, you know, several rows of all of my recent sold and everything like that, it'll automatically generate the total revenue, total profit. You could also do, you know, your average turnaround time or average price sold, or you could do so many different things. And it's, you know, a similar thing. You would just, if you wanted to do the average turnaround time could just make another little spot on this table and it would be equals average of the turnaround column l colon l and there you go so so far the average turnaround time is 13 days so Again, just some ideas, things you could enter in to your spreadsheet. Something I find very helpful, especially as your spreadsheet gets bigger and you have a lot of data points, is to freeze the um, top cells so that this box here, this table is always at the top. So in order to do that, we're just gonna highlight the row underneath it, underneath the last um, row of cells that we wanna freeze. And then up here on view, we'll click that. And then over here, it says freeze panes. So now when we scroll, this will always be on the top. So again, once you have a lot more data in there, it'll be very helpful just to keep that there and be able to scroll around and still be able to see that. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Hopefully it was very easy to follow. And please feel free to leave any questions at all down in the comments. I will do my very best to answer them. And if I don't know the answer, I will try to find the answer. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a really good rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.